Hi everyone, welcome to our talk today. I'm Mang Mang Tsai, PhD, JD, attorney at law at New Wei Ming Law Group. The topic for my talk is H-1B work visa, frequently asked questions, steps, and documents. As you know, we are in the new fiscal year now, and before you realize it, it will be the H-1B application season again, so get prepared sooner than later. In this video, we will introduce uh, more background information about H-1B. This is uh, one of the most important work visas. As you know, there is annual quota for H-1B, which as of now is 85,000. And there are more applicants for this limited number of H-1B opportunity. So there needs to be a lottery, which is usually held in April of each year. 20,000 out of this total 85,000 number is reserved for applicants who received graduate degrees in the United States, like master's degree or PhD. Also, as you know, uh, if you work for university or an institute on a research job, you can skip the lottery and use premium process. If you already currently will have H-1B, if you are already working for a company and you want to work for a new company, you do not need to go through the lottery process again. However, based on the recent UICS ruling, well, you cannot use premium processing for the so-called H-1B transfer. Well, this transfer is just like a new H-1B application. The only difference is you do not need to go through the lottery process, as we just mentioned. And as of now, since you cannot use premium processing, it may take several months before your H-1B filed by the new company is approved. Well, although you can start working for the new company as soon as the application is received by the USCIS. So what are the application steps? As you know, the first step is LCA filed to the US Department of Labor. It may take one to two weeks for the LCA to get certified. After that, you will file the I-129 to the USCIS, and it may take several months to adjudicate your application for the H-1B. Again, you cannot use premium processing for the applications that require lottery and for the transfer application. So what are the fees? Well, for the ILCA step, the U.S. Department of Labor charges no fee. There is no cost. And for the USCIS step, the I-129, the current filing fee is $460. And on top of that, you also need to pay the ACWIA fee supposedly to train the U.S. workers. This fee is $750 for small companies with fewer than 25 employees. For larger companies with more than 25 employees, you will need to pay $1,500 for this ACWIA fee. On top of that, there's also the anti-fraud fee of $500. So usually, if for a small company to file H-1B application, the total governmental fee will be $1,700 plus $10. And on top of that, for those who are eligible for premium processing, there will also be the PP fee. So what are the application materials required? Well, of course, you need to submit the signed forms, including I-129 and G-28 form, and optionally the premium processing I-907 form. Also, you need to submit the certified LCA from the USDOL, Department of Labor. And you submit your case to CIC or to California Service Center uh, for people living in the California and other Midwest states. For people living in the East Coast, they file the application to the Vermont Service Center. So this is different from green card application. Um, there will be different documents involved if you file CAP exempt type application that does not need to go through the lottery process, or if you are using the so-called CAP gap application based on connection to your OPT, optional practical training. So you need to pay attention to details to include those documents to show you have maintained valid legal visa status in the US. Additionally, besides those forms and the background documents, for the employer, well, they need to submit financial documents to show they have sufficient ability to pay the prevailing wage. For the individual employee, well, you need to submit the diploma to show you have at least a bachelor's degree or equivalent. And you can also submit transcript 
to show well you have expertise in this specific field for the professional job. The employer needs to agree to pay the prevailing wage once the H-1B visa status starts. And sometimes, as we know, there have been some issues on IFE or even denial regarding the so-called level one wage. Other than that, sometimes IFEs were issued by the USCIS to request more evidence for a specialty job to show this job is so demanding, you know, it requires a bachelor's degree or higher candidate to complete the job. Also, uh, sometimes job availability to show the employer does have sufficient work to assign to this individual beneficiary. For IT consulting companies, sometimes they assign their employees to work on client side, and this can also be a hot issue and sometimes leads to IFE or denial. As we know, in the past year, there have been more such kind of issues involving H-1B application. However, we feel recently the situation was getting better. This may be partly credited to the applicants and also their law firm's new application strategy in response to the spike of IFE and denial earlier. Finally, as we know, H-1B is only work visa. It's not green card. To get green card, you may also need employer-sponsored PERM application. Our experience is, since it's certified and reviewed by the Department of Labor, it's a different government agency, and sometimes, actually, it is even easier to get PERM approved. So this is a brief summary about the H-1B, the process, the steps, frequently asked questions, what kind of materials are needed, the fees, the form, requirements, etc. Please contact us if you have additional questions. Thank you.